before we start, let us pray. Our great God and loving Heavenly Father, we are so thankful because you are our loving God. Thank you, the Heavenly Father, for your people that are gathered here from different places of the world. We thank you because your goodness, your mercy, and your love transcends all understanding. We ask that as we're going to have to open your word, that the Holy Spirit teach us. And through that, Lord, we may learn more about you so that our love may be able to channel, to be channeled to those people who are in need. Thank you, the Heavenly Father, for the promise that you will always be with us and that if we come to your throne, you will forgive us for our many sins and that you will eventually take us home. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Range of all promise. Um, you know, I usually like getting somebody else's story and sharing the story to others. But today, I'm going to talk about my own story. And um, it happened around two months ago. And it was March the 2nd when it happened. But at this time, God woke me up at 3.30 in the morning. You know, it was already Monday after having an incredible weekend. But the story really started several weeks back when a friend came to visit. You know, he lives in a small town, three and a half hours away from Melbourne, called Stoll. But after church, he mentioned to me that he was having some kind of asthma or allergic rhinitis symptoms. He was coughing. Um, so many things happens. So one thing to help a friend, I offered to loan him my multi-purpose cleaner that not only cleans the air, but also removes dust, particles from carpet, furniture, and mattresses. Even though I didn't want to do without my machine, I knew my friend needed it more than I did. As the days turned into weeks, it was difficult to have our machine lend to somebody. After all, as you can see there, my two-year-old daughter was constantly dropping food crumbs everywhere. Still, my family did without the efficient cleaner for a few more weeks until we couldn't wait any more longer. We needed our machine back. I look at the calendar to see when we could make the three-hour drive to stall to get our machine back. But unfortunately, I saw that we would have to drive on a Sabbath because I work Monday to Friday and my wife works Sundays. I realized we wouldn't be able to travel next Sabbath because my auntie was preaching, nor we would be able to go the following Sabbath because I was scheduled to preach. And so we chose the Sabbath. But when I suggested to my wife, she rejected the idea of driving three hours. I understand why. Traveling with little ones is quite challenging. So I made her a deal. And I asked her if she would be willing if we could go for a drive and meet our friend in between. Unfortunately, my friend's work schedule would not allow him to meet us that day. So he couldn't come in between. But because I really wanted the machine back, I decided not to tell my wife that we were making the full three-hour trip until we were on the road. I even asked a friend to drive so that I could help my wife with the children. We didn't leave our home until 9.30 a.m. that Sabbath morning, which meant we were going to miss the church. But remember the story of Jonah. In Jonah chapter 1, verses 1 to 3, it says, Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish, from the presence of the Lord, he went to the, down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went onto it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Verse 2 says, Arise and no go to Nineveh. But you know, he didn't. God wanted us to go to Ballarat because Ballarat is on the way so that the Lord can preach to us. 
You know the story of Jonah and the lesson is really when the Lord intends you to go to a place, don't fight it out. Because in the end, you'll end up there. So anyway, we went and we ended up there. And so we arrived Balarat. We, stopped, we, we decided to stop there because we had friends that live there. And so we love to be in that place. When we arrived at the church at 11.25 a.m., we noticed the divine service had already started. I was disappointed to see that the church pastor was at the main entrance. This meant he, was preaching, he wasn't preaching that day. I usually look, up, look forward to seeing him preach because I love his sermons. He's straight to the heart and really um, ask, makes you ask yourself um, about your life as a Christian. Never mind, I thought to myself, maybe one of the elders were going to preach today. So I sat on the back bench and listened to the preacher tell his story. Honestly, it was the most incredible story of minister ministry I had ever heard. He talked about he I came to I came to find out that the pastor's ministry was focused on communist countries. He spoke about those poor countries and shared about the urgent needs of places like North Korea, Cuba, Vietnam, Laos, and many more. He came to tell us about the time where in North Korea, they would fly balloons from China into the border of North Korea. And inside those massive balloons were relief goods. But in each balloon, they would put a chapter of the Bible. It would fly into North Korea and they would put in a gadget there, a really small chip that would be able to um, track where those balloons would land. And they would see communities after communities receiving not only relief goods, but also a chapter of the Bible. What an incredible story. He would even talk about a time when North Korea asked them if they would be able to help out in their ministry to be able to provide blankets because thousands of North Koreans die every year because of the cold weather. And because there's no electricity, but only in Pyongyang, the whole country is dark. There's no heater. And so blanket is what they needed. So this pastor with his team went to get some blankets. To make the long story short, they were able to get thousands of blankets. They didn't have money, but the Lord provided for them in such an incredible way. They went to distribute 3,000 blankets in one day. And the best part about it, it would be the soldiers that would be distributing them. The good thing is that in each blanket, they would put and hid and hide a chapter of the Bible. A week later, a few several days later, the blanket will vibrate. They put in a chip there that will be um, able to vibrate after several days because after those days, they would be sure that the blankets are already in the people's home. When the recipients receive the blanket and they start seeing that there is a vibration inside, they will try to open it and try to find out where's that vibration coming from. And there they will see one chapter of John, a chapter of Matthew, Talking about the gospel message, you know, my dear friends, you think the crisis has just started early this year. The crisis has been in so many countries long ago, and the gospel is being preached right at this very moment. People will be reading about the love of God. They will be able to hear the Lord's voice through this ministry. And there was one time in Cuba. You know, a communist country. They had the biggest revival uh, evangelism program there. And with so many hurdles, the Lord allowed them to be able to have this big event. But at the end of it, thousands of people would like to get baptized. But the problem was there was years of famine in that land. There was no swimming pool that they were able to do their baptism to. So um, they prayed and they spoke to the minister. Of religion and they asked them if we would they would be able to use one of the swimming pools or like our sort but they said no because we do not have rain and we do not know how we're going to be able to maintain this if we let you 
in thousands, I know, hundreds of people who wanting to be baptized. But then the guy said, the pastor said, you know what? Saturday, you let us in. Sunday, I will pray to my God that on Sunday, there will be rain. After so many discussions, the minister of religion agreed. And he said, it better be rain on Sunday. Because if not, you will be in trouble and I will be out of job. They had the best time seeing souls won for the kingdom. Hundreds of them. Saturday and then the next day came years of famine, of drought, I mean. It poured for more than six hours in Cuba. The pastor told us in that particular Sabbath, after, after Sabbath day, Who is your God? Because mine is great and mine can, be, can provide. He even talked about his daughter. The pastor's daughter, he said, you know, one time I came around preaching the word of God and a day, one day I came home and then my daughter came to me and he said, Dad, she's a teenager, a young girl, that I know now what my ministry is. And the pastor said, what do you know about ministry? Well, Dad, you keep on preaching to everybody about ministry. Can't I have my own ministry? Okay, okay, tell me about your ministry. Well, their house is not so far or just beside a cemetery. And he said, Dad, I would see out of my window funerals being conducted there. People coming and going, but people are coming in sad and crying. My ministry is, Dad, every time I would see a funeral, I would come and go into the cemetery and come and look for the person that is the saddest, the one that's crying the most. And I will come to that person and I'm going to come and I'm going to give my flower. And I will go in to say, Mr. or Miss, this is a flower for you. I know that you are crying and I'm sorry about your loss. But you know, I'm giving this flower because when Jesus comes, you will no longer cry. When Jesus comes, we will all be happy. That is my ministry. Pastor said, that is my daughter's ministry. I think some 12 year old came to think about these things. And one day there was a knock on the door and the sheriff came, the local police. And the police spoke to the pastor and he said, is this where that little girl stays? Oh yeah, I think you're talking about my daughter. Yeah, well, she came to give me some rose or flower when my mom died. And I came to see her because I wanted to give her a $500 check so that she can buy more roses and flowers so that when somebody comes around beside your house in the cemetery, she can give them the flower. Who is your God? Because their God is great. And their God loves the perishing souls. As the pastor made an appeal to everyone and shared his story, many stories were shared. I was touched. But at that particular moment, he pleaded that his ministry, he needed 25 helium tanks so that they would be able to fly balloons over North Korea the next day. But their ministry didn't have enough finances, but he knows that his father in heaven is rich. Not only that the balloons contain relief goods, but a chapter of the Bible, so that we could evangelize to the most politically isolated country on earth. As the, spokes, as the pastor spoke, I remember a time in December, early December, when I started my own selling business, where I sell vacuum cleaners. I had been receiving good compensation for selling the machines. But there was one time in early December, one sale that I made, it took a long time for it to process, much longer than expected. The commission from that sale was delayed. Uh, well, this is already March, almost. The payment hadn't come through until a couple of days before Ballarat. Oh, what an incredible story. 
December it was sold, but not until end of February the commission was given to me. But when the pastor made his appeal, I remembered the money I received. Immediately, a friend and I went to withdraw the money from an ATM. However, I did not withdraw all the money. I said, yeah, I'll take a big chunk or a big portion of it. I'm going to give it to the pastor. It is because I'm a fallen human being and struggle to fully trust in God with everything. The Lord struck me straight. I felt that I could leave some money for me because I have young family, I have children that might have some needs. But honestly, looking back, I thought I should have trusted him that blessed me. My friend even offered his money and said, Chris, he's here actually today watching. I have cash here with me and I can lend it to you. I said, no, it's all right. We, we can just go to the ATM and get the money. I went the money. I took most of it, but I left some for my family because of worry. When we got to the, when we went back to the service, the preacher was already preaching. This time, she was, he was sharing a personal heartbreaking story about his son. It was an event that no parent should ever have to experience, I tell you. The most heartbreaking. Once the service was over, I went to meet the preacher. It was such a happy conversation. There was an instant connection. It seems like we were old friends. I handed him the envelope that contained most of the money from a previous sale. And I told him, Pastor, I am not rich. And I have kids in the car sleeping at the moment. And I worry about them. But you know what? I'm giving this money to you so that you can fly many more balloons over North Korea. And I thought to myself, so that you can preach the message to those who long to hear it. After we spoke, my heart was in tears. I was moved to look for my friend who was offering me cash. And I said, can you give me that cash? I'm going to give all of it now. Give me that cash. And whatever I left in the ATM, I'm going to give it to him. I'm just going to pay you back later. Immediately, he offered me the money. And as I promised to pay him back later, he gave it. And I went to the pastor and I said, Pastor, this is more for the Lord. That meant I had nothing left from that commission. But it didn't matter because I was taking a step of faith. Looking back, I realized that the reason the December sales didn't get finalized because the money was supposed to be for the poor in the communist countries of the world. The money would be used not only to meet their physical needs, but their spiritual needs as well. They would be given the opportunity to hear the gospel message of Jesus. God allowed it to happen the way it did because the world needs to hear about the coming of the one who will save us. The story of Abraham and Isaac is found in Genesis chapter 22. And if you, have your, if you have your Bibles with you, let us open the book. Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 to 5. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, I am here. Then he said, Take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him. And Isaac his son, and he split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. He saw it. And Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and worship, and we will come back for you. We stop there. We'll continue later. Imagine this. God asked Abraham to offer the child that was promised to him, that after so long, they didn't see Isaac. But remember, at this time, his other son just left because God told him to let Hagar go because Sarah is your wife. Ishmael's gone, 
And now you're asking me to sacrifice my son, the one that's left and the one that was promised? Who? Okay, that's all right. Okay, you're asking me, no problem. But now you're going to tell me to travel for three days? Abraham said, yes, Lord, I'll do it. Where do you want me to go? Well, go. I'm going to tell you where. But it will take you three days. Three days to get there. Imagine the agony of traveling for three days, knowing that at the end of it, you will kill your own son. But why? Is God that kind of God that will find joy in looking down upon his people, suffering and having agony and stress? But why? Well, it was a test of faith. Abraham could have changed his mind in those three days. First day, he's like, oh yeah, I'll do it. I love the Lord. I'm going to do it. Isaac is his. He gave it to me. I'm going to take, he's going to take it away. But the second day, and maybe on the third day, he's like, no, maybe I think I'm doing the wrong thing here. I love my son. Maybe not. But Abraham went on. God, but the sub thought, Abraham could change his mind in the three days of journey. But you know what? That is why he is the father of faith. Let us continue. Verses 6 to 8, it says, So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son, and took the fire in his hand and a knife, and the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. Then he said, Look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? If I was the father, I would have cried. It would have broken my heart. Lord, where is the lamb? Knowing that you're the lamb. You're the one who's gonna, I'm going to kill. And Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. God will provide the lamb. When you're in the midst of deciding whether to give for the Lord or not, whether you are asked by the Lord in your heart and you're inspired to share whatever it is that you own, but you're worried that you're going to give something out of your comfort zone, if you can give 100 but you're comfortable in giving 100, but if you're asked to give 1,000 and that is outside of your comfort zone and you give, the Lord's promise for you today is that He will provide for you. He will provide for you. Like my experience in the ATM, I should have trusted him because truly God will provide. I tell you that. And let us continue. You know, I just laugh at myself now looking back. Not only in this particular event, but in so many things that happened to me, I should have given more. If I did, he could have blessed me even more. We finish off in the story, verses 9 to 18. It reads, Then they came to the place of which God had told them, and Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order. And he bound his, Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. In verse 11 he says, But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, he said, Here I am. And he said, Do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its thorns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, in the mouth of the Lord it shall be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, by, him, by myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son, blessing I will bless you, and multiplying I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven and as the sand of sea which is on the seashore, and your descendants shall possess the gate of your enemies. In your seed all of the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. Remember, I gave all the money to Pastor Lozano. God said that because you have not withheld the things that we value the most, the money, the properties, your cars, 
they are nice or not even so nice, if you are going to dedicate that to the Lord's work, even your families, the work, everything that matters to you, if you will dedicate it to God and provide that, that you will feel insecure, the Lord will bless you and provide you like Abraham. God will bless you and the blessing will be as numerous as the stars in the sky and the sand of the seashore. Remember this verse because I'm going to mention this to you later and see what the Lord has done to me. My family drove home that day without our multi-purpose cleaning machine. But it didn't matter because I had a new purpose in life. Whew. You know what an incredible Sabbath day we had? It was, it was, it feels like it was just yesterday. All the way home, I couldn't stop thinking about the preacher. Pastor Eliseo Lozano of Changing People's Lives Ministry International, a Seventh-day Adventist pastor, is now sent to minister to the communist countries in the world. And you should be happy to know that we Adventists are reaching out to those people. You know, in saying that, the Bible says that the message will be preached into all nations. You know, everybody should hear about the message. And you know what? People are hearing it. The communist countries, they know about the Jesus we know. We better be ready because they are getting ready. The next day, my wife went to work and I woke up with my two-year-old daughter beside me. As I opened my eyes, her face just flashed. The greatest of God's blessing. Then as I went downstairs with her, I couldn't believe what I saw. My multi-purpose cleaner was there, sitting, just there, as I would see it from a corner. Wow, the machine is here. My friend was there. He had driven three hours to Melbourne to take his, English, to take his girlfriend to her English exam that morning. And I thought to myself, wow. I realized that if he had told me he was coming to Melbourne on Sunday, we wouldn't have made the drive on the Saturday to meet this pastor. Not only that, the Lord really intended for us to go there and meet this guy so that I may be changed. God had planned it all along. And what are the odds? What are the odds? That day, I had two appointments with different couples so I can offer them to have a look at this multi-purpose cleaner. Remember, I gave all my commission from the December sale. But you know what? The Lord replaced all that money that day, that same day. And at the end of the day, I realized that he actually multiplied it 10 times. I was driving home and I was teary. And I said, Lord, you really want to finish the work. Not because of what I can do. It is because with... The little faith that I have, you can multiply it into so many lives that can hear your message. He multiplied it 10 times and it is still so fresh in my mind and in my heart today. Remember the story of Abraham? Because you didn't withhold your son and your only son. Because you didn't withhold your family. You didn't withhold your car, your computer, everything it is that you own, your finances. The Lord promises that I will bless you as numerous as the stars in the sky and the sand in the seashore. He blessed me just like that. And it is not a joke. And we ask the question, who is your God? Ask yourself today, who is your God? You cannot know how great your God is until you try Him. You know, you see this pandemic, you see this crisis, crippling the economies of the world and really putting down great countries on their knees and you realize what is happening. The Lord is coming soon, my dear friends and brothers and sisters. Beloved Frankston Church, let us finish the work because He is coming soon. And I'm telling you this straight from my heart. I'm telling you this because He is here, just ready to come down. Please understand that I am not a perfect person. Many of you here knows me. I am an inconsistent Seventh-day Adventist who has a history of serving God intermittently, 
when I feel in my heart I would like to serve others, it feels good to do good to others. Of course it does. I work as a full-time nurse. I have a wife and two kids. I make many mistakes along the way. But God. Really, but God. When God intends to finish his work and rescue his children who are suffering in so many countries, including the countries where we do ministries to, he does a perfect job using imperfect people because he is the only faithful being in this entire universe. What a loving God we serve. And so this is why I followed God's leading and I actually started writing this story. According to my wife, who is listening now, I'm usually a good sleeper. But around 3.30 in the morning, I woke up to a mild discomfort in my left arm. It's just enough to keep me awake. And so as I lay awake, I recall the Bible passage I read the night before. The night before I went to bed, it was Nehemiah chapter 2. Usually, I would have read several chapters, but that day I did a few appointments. I was tired and I could only read one chapter. As I laid wide awake, suddenly a thought came to mind. It was so clear at 3.30 in the morning, and that thought said, Jesus is coming soon. I wasn't thinking anything. It just suddenly hit me. Boom. 3.30. It was so quiet. It's dark. Jesus is coming soon. And so I said, okay, I need to seek him. I grabbed my phone because it was dark. I couldn't read the book. I grabbed my phone and started reading chapter 3 of Nehemiah. The supposed chapter that I was too tired to read the night before. Surprisingly, my mind was very sharp. And so I went to read. The story was about ordinary people rebuilding their own part of the wall in Jerusalem. This was a time at the reign of King Artaxerxes when the wall of Jerusalem is broken down and the gates were on fire. Through, Nehemiah's, through Nehemiah, God's people had a desire to rebuild the wall. There were oppositions, but the end, at the end, they started to build the wall. Nehemiah chapter 3 Then Eliashaba, the high priest, rose up with his brethren, the priests. And they built the sheep gate and sanctified it. They set up the doors of it, even unto the tower of Mea. They sanctified it unto the tower of Hananil. And next unto him builded the men of Jericho, and next to them Zachor, the son of Imri. But the fish gate did the sons of Hasena build, who also laid the beams thereof, and set up the doors thereof, the locks thereof, and the bars thereof. And next unto them, Merimoth, the son of Urijah, the son of Koz. And unto them repaired Meshulam, the son of Berechiah, the son of Merezabel. And next unto them repaired Zadok, the son of Bana. The chapter continued and reading so many names of what they're actually doing in that part of the wall. Merle Poirer puts it nicely, and she said, Nehemiah issues an all-hands-on-deck call. The wall is divided into sections and assigned. Count the names of group listed, more than 40. Take time to see who they are. They are not masons. They are not contractors or builders. But they are priests, perfumers, goldsmiths, and women. Everyday people who may have all the skills, but together they contribute what they have. The word repair is used 38 times. Translated, it can mean to strengthen, encourage, to make something strong. Isn't this what we are called to do? It is time for each church member to show up, pick up their part of the work, and contribute to the soon return of Jesus. Where is your part of the wall? And the question was, have you started building? Franklin Church, have we started building? Have we contributed soon and daily to the soon return of Jesus? And this is Jesus' heartfelt question for us today. After I have read this, I knelt down in prayer and really cried out and poured my heart out to God. And I asked him, Lord, why do you love us so much? We fail you. We do terrible things every day. Why is your love so much? And 
unable to be understood. And then I talked to him like a trusted friend. After that, I knew I wouldn't be able to fall asleep again. I told my wife I needed to go. She asked me, where are you going? I said, I need to go and write this story. As Doug Bachelor once said, and I'm paraphrasing, when a person dedicates his money and everything, really, to his work, that person will never lack. That weekend changed my life from an inconsistent Seventh-day Adventist church, Seventh-day Adventist, to someone who is a part of a great movement that will finish the work, I am a changed man. By the time 6 a.m. rolled around, it was time to go to, go to work on a Monday morning. My left arm was nothing but perfect, and I was ready to go. But Jesus' heartfelt question to all of us is, are you ready to go as well? You know, the song tells us that it is so sweet to trust in Him, and truly it is to trust. And experiencing Him is like experiencing a bit of heaven while here on earth. This happened in February, March 2nd, really, end of February, early March. It was the time before Corona came to Australia and became a global pandemic. The Lord prepared me because He knew that there is great work to be done during this crisis. He is just so good. He is loving, faithful, and really mighty. That is why we have started a new ministry, and I would just like to share it to you. And I would like to urge you, if you can please pray for us. It's called the Rainbow of Promise Ministry. That is the reason, the story is the reason why the Lord led me to that one, to this, to this ministry. But you know where this ministry is founded on? In faith and prayer. I was telling my auntie, I said, how are we going to start this? We have no money. There is no money. How can we start a ministry? You know, it is founded in faith and prayer. And I'm telling you this, and I'll tell you a story. Why? But why Rainbow of Promise? It is because in our ministry with the Lord, we are to hold on to His promises. Because a lot of things will try to put us down. We won't have time to read this, but if you would like, you can read it in your own time, Genesis 9, 8 to 17. Basically, there's, the rainbow is a sign of God's covenant to Noah and all the living creatures, really, that he will never destroy the earth again using flood. We found it in Genesis, the first book of the Bible. And the rainbow, we find it again at the last book of the Bible in Revelation. Revelation chapter 4, verses 2 to 3 says, And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne, and he that sat to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. We see the rainbow in here. You know, I think some people would know um, that for a rainbow to form, you need two elements. You need one, you need a rain drop or a water droplet or water. And secondly, you need light. And at a certain angle, we behold this beautiful rainbow. Ellen White writes about the rainbow in Revelation chapter 4. And it says, The rainbow of promise, encircling the throne on high, is an everlasting testimony that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. It testifies to the universe that God will never forsake His people in their struggle with evil. It is an assurance for us of strength and protection as long as the throne itself shall endure. As the bow in the cloud is formed by the union of the sunlight and the shower, so the rainbow encircling the throne represents the combined power of mercy and justice. It is not just justice alone that is to be maintained, for this would eclipse the glory of the rainbow of promise above the, rain, the throne. Man could see only the penalty of the law. But were there no justice, no penalty, there will be no stability to the government of God. It is the mingling of judgment and mercy that makes salvation full and complete. What a beautiful thing. It is the blending of the two that leads us as we view the world's Redeemer 
and the law of Jehovah to exclaim, Thy gentleness had made me great. We know that the gospel is a perfect and complete system, revealing the immutability of the law of God. Mercy invites us to enter through the gates into the city of God, and justice is sacrificed to accord every obedient soul full privileges as a member of the royal family, a child of the heavenly king. The rainbow needs two things, light and wet water or water vapor. But the rainbow in Revelation 4.3, are two elements, justice and mercy. Justice because if without it, heaven will not be heaven. But with justice, and as you enter those gates, you are assured that heaven will truly be heaven. And only for the place who really loves God. Justice makes sure of that. And mercy because without mercy, Nobody can enter the gate because we all have fallen short of the glory of God. But through Jesus, the, mercy, the merciful Father looks down upon us full of grace and says, Those who come and would like me to live in their hearts may enter and become citizens of that heavenly land. Ellen White continued and he said, By faith, let us look upon the rainbow round about the throne. The cloud of sin confessed behind it. The rainbow of promise is an assurance to every humble, contrite, believing soul that his life is one with Christ and that Christ is one with God. The wrath of God will not fail upon one soul that seeks refuge in him. God himself has declared, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. The bow shall be in the cloud and I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting gospel or covenant. You know, um... Brethren, we have started this ministry, as I said to you before, with nothing, only faith. And here, here we are now. Rainbow of Promise Ministry will go into where the Lord leads. Our mission is with the love of Christ personally experienced. We are to bring forth message of hope to all men by attending to their physical and spiritual needs through the working of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Even the mission was a um, was something that came about prayer. How we can go? How we can start? The first division is revival of members. Just very quickly, I'm going to share with you. We have regular Bible studies because we can only learn through the Word. We give books to members aimed at the revival of souls. If you haven't read the book of Melody Mason called Daring to Ask for More, um, you can buy it, but it's hard to find at the moment. Let me know if you would like it. It basically changed my prayer life. From a superficial prayer to a prayer that really tries to reach heaven. And I tell you, it did. It reached heaven. And daily, your experience is something out of this world. You know, we were told that we are to do God's work. But one thing that I've notice and I have learned is that in the past we I did a lot of sharing, giving books, giving letterbox materials, sharing things, but one thing I lack was that prayer that we are asked to do. It was said that prayer is the first and most important work. I say, you know what? Without prayer that is earnest, heartfelt, urgent and persistent I tell myself, let me not do the work. I'm just going to make myself tired. I'm just going to make myself sweat. But with heartfelt, earnest, urgent prayer, really seeking for His will, we can reach thousands. We can reach people who are even hiding. Let me know if you wanted this book. And your ministry is to be able to provide this so that we may be able to share that joy in prayer. We have a daily prayer ministry. This I think more than a month now. Every night, every single day, 7.30 in the evening, we would have a telephone conference and we would pray for the saving of souls. And the second division is the spreading the gospel. We give books and other Bible materials around Melbourne. The recipients can contact us for Bible studies and prayer. And you know what? When I was doing this selling business, when I would sell, I would tell the Lord, Lord, thank you for the sale. I'm going to give this to you. 
And the Lord impressed it in my heart and he said, you know what? You're only giving me when you make a sale. Why don't you promise me to give me even without a sale? And I said to him, you know what, Lord? We're going to commit to people so that we will be able to see how powerful you are. With the second division, what we do is we sponsor Bible workers around the world. Now we will have to commit because these people have families too. So we collaborate with the local church. We do not make our own ministry. We only support the local church around the world in choosing a man of faith, a person who loves the Lord, knows the Bible, also has burden in seeking souls, seeking souls saved for the kingdom, but also, very important, somebody who is a prayer warrior. Somebody who would pray like Jacob, who would wrestle. You would not let go until the Lord showers his blessing. And you know what? I didn't know it was hard to find. And the Lord blessed us with three people so far. There's still more, there's more places that we would love to have, Bible workers, but we are just waiting for the Lord's command. And the Bible worker will, will work under the local church. We will only provide support to them and we get regular updates. And the Lord has provided us so much blessing in learning on how he has blessed these ministries in those churches. We share the burden of the local churches in their efforts to see souls saved for the kingdom. And the third division that we have, as Jesus did, we too are to help the needy. I tell you a story. I know we're getting close to one hour and I'm sorry, I do apologize. I would like to tell you there was a lot of times that we would like to send relief bags to the communities, uh, mainly in the Philippines, but we're starting to in Sri Lanka uh, soon. And we, we're um, having contacts with Africa as well, starting uh, our ministry there. And really, we only support the local churches. The local churches, what is this that you need? And the first thing that we'll offer them is our heartfelt prayer. What we do, we send relief bags to communities. In each bag, a note is placed talking about God's love and the contact details of our local person there. So that when they see people are coming back, realize that, that not only that they are hungry physically, but spiritually they will be able to see that note talking to them about Jesus in John 11 when he wept that he cries with you. We write it in the local language. The Bible worker will regularly visit the homes of the recipients. We are not asking for baptism every month, but we will continually establish friendship with these people until Jesus comes because we believe one day they will ask, why are you so good to us? Why are you so good to our family? It might take years. It might take two years, three years, five years, ten years. But that day will come and they will ask why. And it will be an opportunity for us to say because my God is a loving God. And he supplies all my need so that I can share my love to you. The division will complement the second division in spreading the gospel. And it will be supported by the first division in prayer. You know, people would do things around the world. But here, we will wrestle in prayer every night. People are in tears in the phone while we talk. Because we really would like, we, we, we have received that burden from God to see this soul saved of the kingdom. One day you would pray and say, Lord, please come soon. And the next day your prayer will change and you will say, no, Lord, don't come yet. Because we would like to bring more souls for you before you come. We do. And to give you a quick over snapshot of what we have done through the Lord's leading, we have given 200 family families relief bags in Manila, 118 in the indigenous people of Mindoro in the Philippines. I think 38 families in Bicol province, actually I think it's closer to 50 now. And thank you for Kuya Noy who is here as well. In Bansud, another 50 families. In Cagayan, 10 families. In Occidental Mindoro, another 180 families. An island in Palawan, which is also in the Philippines, we actually found an island that needs a Bible worker. There are Adventists there looking for a shepherd. We couldn't find. We're going to sponsor a Bible worker there so that they will be revived. So that too, they will also be able to experience God every day. And another place in Marinduque, 56 families. You know, my dear friends, we started with zero. But because of prayer and because we trusted God that he will provide for all our needs. 
we are almost, we are reaching towards the thousand families that we'd reach. And everybody will have a note there that the Holy Spirit will be able to move their hearts so that they can read about John 11. Talks about Jesus weeping. And really Jesus crying with them because they only long to have a personal experience. And in Melbourne, 777 letterbox pamphlets are given every week. We have handed books to homes. We go into the home and hand it. If you want to learn on how we do it, let us know. The Lord has been so good because He is coming soon. And you know, we say that He is coming soon, but maybe not. Maybe we're not sure if He is. But deep in your heart, I know. Deep in my heart, He is already here. He is just withholding it because of the people who have not heard. And our prayer ministry is a daily ministry that we pray for people. We now have three or four groups praying at the same time, 7.30 every day, so that we may be able to bring about the message of love to the households. Last night, we went around the city. We gave blankets, 30 of them. Each blanket permanently glued the words, Jesus loves you. Permanently glued the words, nothing can separate you from God's love. We went around the city of Melbourne looking for the homeless so that as they lay cold on the streets and as they're looking for some kind of warmth and as we give the blankets to them, they will be able to feel that, wow, thank you for this. But as they look at it, they will see the note, Jesus loves you. Nothing can separate. The first few times they will ignore it. But every day that they're cold, the Lord will have an opportunity for them to experience the warmth of His love. And through prayer, the Holy Spirit will truly move their hearts. This is the Adra um, activity there. And we went there to give away the blankets. 30 blankets. We have more. One author said that we are not to look for better machinery. We are not to look for really or spend our, a lot of our energy in looking for innovation on how we can reach souls. We just need something basic. But what we should do is we should wrestle in prayer because that is the first and most important work. You can just say a nice word to somebody. I care for you. This is a piece of bread. You might be hungry. And then when you go home and as you get into the car, offer a prayer because truly his treasure is boundless. He will give it to you because he loves to see you souls saved for the kingdom. 1 Corinthians 3 9 says, For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. You know, the next song that will be sung is a song that inspired me to do more for the needy. And our prayer, really, our prayer is that we will not be proud, but we will be able to serve in the humbleness of spirit. Because as you do more for the Lord, you realize that nothing that you do can convict the soul, but only through the working of the Holy Spirit, they can truly have a personal experience with Jesus. You know, um, we... I'll take you a quick sto our story. There was one time that we were looking for funds because somebody asked me, Brother, there are people that are hungry and we need to buy food for them. And I said, brother, we do not have money. But do not worry, we will pray for it. The message came at 10.19 in the morning. At 10.21, somebody messaged me and said, brother, I have just transferred the money into your account. I could not believe what just happened. The Lord just gave two minutes. For the lack of faith that I have, he thought I have to give it away straight because Chris might not trust in me. There was one time, and Sheila knows this, my wife, we had a bill for, for gas, $900. I think it's because it's winter and we had kids. And I prayed to the Lord, Lord, $900 for the gas bill. How can we continue with this ministry if we cannot even pay for my own gas bill? Three days later, $1,000 came to my account and I didn't even know where it came from. And I thought to myself, pay week is next week, not this week. 
So I called them and I tried to find out where this money is coming from. Maybe it's not my money, but the workplace said, well, you know what? It is your money. We just forgot to give it to you. And it's all yours now. $1,000. The electricity bill was $900. The Lord gave me $100 extra. Dear Frankston Church, he is faithful. Let us finish the work. Let us pray more because he can bestow more if we do trust in him. The next song is called Miracles and it will be sung by my cousin. Thank you, Alex. And as you listen to it, contemplate on the message. It talks about there are so many hands I cannot hold. So many hearts I cannot comfort. But you know, amidst the countless blessing the Lord has given you, let us serve him in the ways that the Lord has inspired you to do. Every day, let us serve him and every day let us seek him so that we can abide in him moment by moment. Thank you, Frankston Church, and may you be blessed by this song. Good morning and have a Sabbath, Frankston Church. So this morning, I'll be singing to you Miracles by Sally DeFord.
Thank you. Let us pray. Our great God and loving Heavenly Father, we are so thankful because your love will reach those we cannot reach, the hands that we cannot hold, and hearts that we cannot comfort. Jesus is there. We praise you for who you are, and we thank you for the rainbow of promise because as we look and as we are reminded of the rainbow, we are reminded of your great desire for us to have communion with you. We know the Heavenly Father that you are coming really soon and we want to be there. Our prayer is that those who are here today, that you will not allow any of them to miss out on that very beautiful and wonderful land prepared by Jesus. We pray, the Heavenly Father, that from this day forward, in our own small ways, we may be able to reach to those people so that souls may be saved for the kingdom. Give us that burden that Jesus have. Give us the love, because as we experience it personally, it will just overflow and we will be naturally be a channel of blessing and love to those people. Thank you, the Heavenly Father, for the assurance that you will never leave us. Dear Holy Spirit, continually minister to us every day so that as we go closer to the end of this world, we too may be able to receive the outpouring of the Holy Spirit because without it, the work will not be finished. Our hearts may be ready to receive you so that we may be mighty in your work and your humble service, we may do great. Give us your peace, the Heavenly Father. Give us your power and your love. Give the blessings of heaven. The treasures are boundless so that we may be able to see and experience more of the joy in trusting in you. Bless us now and bless everyone as we continue to do work and be a part of that great movement that will finish the work here on earth. And as we look up and look forward to the day that you are coming to that, from the clouds of heaven, we may say that this is my God in whom I love and I serve. Forgive us, the Heavenly Father. All these things we ask in the loving name of Jesus. Amen.